Now today it's time for the most daunting part of this project. So we've got that pipe on there, I was waiting for that to come in. That pipe will let us get all the air out. Now we need to get the air and fuel into the bike. We also uh, clean the carb, install that fuel mix screw so we can set it up properly. But uh, now we really want to get the power out of it. We need to jet the bike. So change basically like the, f the size of the fuel nozzle that squirts fuel into the engine. <sighs> Allergies here today. And we want to open up the air box. It's really the only way to get mass airflow into this bike. So we'll actually be cutting the air box. And I have some jets here we're going to play with. The reason that this is the most daunting part is that uh, carb work like this can be really trial and error base. There's no do this exact set of steps and your bike will run flawlessly. There's some tuning and picking and tinkering and it might not be right so you might have to get the needle out and raise the needle another position. The jet might not be right. So it's definitely the toughest to get right but once we get it right the power should really really come out on this bike. So let's get started. So we can just go ahead and start scrapping the bike. It's really quick and easy at this point. I've had it apart so many times. So the fuel tank also has to come off the bike for this, which is very simple. You have two bolts right here, and then you have two lines. You have the main fuel line right here, and then you have a vent line. So both of those are really easy to get off. You have pliers and a clamp right here. I prefer to take it off the carburetor so it's one less hose in your way. Once you get that off, you just pull the tank straight off the bike. Now because of the work we did the other day, today's job becomes pretty simple here since we've already had all of this off once. Remember we cut a chisel tip in that. We've already had this all off once. So we don't have to struggle with that. We replaced the bottom screws with Allen heads. So uh, we don't have to struggle. We have those nice clean Allen heads there. They're going to be super easy to break apart. So remove the throttle assembly here. Some people take out or remove the choke. I find as long as you loosen up the, the keepers here on the frame, it leaves enough play that you can gently rotate your curb. Anyways, once you loosen up the two boot clamps here. Now you can rotate the carb, just make sure you keep your choke cable with the rotation. So we'll get at the top first, remove the two screws, see how nice and simple that was now. And you can see that the carb easily rotates enough. And there's a, there's a, a little small o-ring inside of here that we don't want to lose. And you can see it's just sitting right there. Now you can pull that slide right out of there. Remember, be careful you don't tear this uh, the diaphragm here. And then here is our factory needle. So we're going to be replacing that. Now, if I didn't already mention, I have the Pro Cycle Kit. Okay. So if you remember me also stating that, uh, that Suzuki didn't want anyone tinkering with the bike. This is a factory needle with no adjustment. You have a clip. I don't know, there might be one slot under that washer. I'm not sure, but not much going on there. Right here, let's have a look at the Pro Cycle needle. Much different. First off, we have a massive taper compared to factory, and that'll give you much better throttle response across the rev range. Also notice it's a shorter needle. And notice all those adjustments. You see all those adjustments there? You have a much thinner needle, which is going to allow more fuel, and you also have a lot of adjustments. So, big change right there. Now, you can throw that needle back down in the slide, throw the slide back in the exact same way as you uh, removed it. Now, you want to rotate the carb so the bottom comes out on the other side. You can imagine if we had those Phillips. Now, trying to get this off the Phillips in there would be near impossible, but with these. These hex head bits or screws, super simple. There we go. And there, if you remember from when we had it apart on the on the bench, our big main jet is just wide open right there. So because of the location, I can't give you a good angle there. That mixed screw is in the way. But we have 
the main jet just hanging right here, right off the bottom of the carburetor, and it just unscrews. It's a chisel tip, uh, chisel tip screw, and there it is, right there, the stock 140. Now this is going back in Dad's bike because Dad's has been rejetted and stuff, and it was rejetted before he got it. The other guy had a pipe before he sold it. He put uh, the stock pipe back on it. Dad doesn't want to invest in another pipe. So what we're going to do is seal up his air box so it's like factory. Then we're going to put back this stock jet, this 140, and uh, and set his bike back to factory spec, which is which is fine for him. Remember, he's coming up from the XD250, so the DR is already crazy powerful for him. So here we have it. If you can read, I think you should be able to read right there. 155. That's a 155. So basically, fuel travels through this hole in the middle. And uh, a 155 has a bigger hole than a 150, than a 145, and so on. The bike runs a 140 from factory. ProCycle comes with 45, 50, and 55. 155 jets, so you can choose. Because of the exhaust I have on there, uh, ProCycle recommends a 155, so that's what I'm trying first. I'm half expecting it to be just too much, but uh, I'm going to give it a shot. Let's we'll see what we can get out of this thing. So we threw that bowl back on the carburetor. The carb work is very simple. Now we have the amount of fuel we want, we're hoping, uh, whistling into the engine. Now we need to make sure that that amount of fuel has enough air to help it combust properly. Of course, fuel or anything needs oxygen to burn, so we need as much air whistling in as the amount of fuel we have going in. Now, ProCycle basically suggests you cut the top completely out of your air box. They even gave a template there which shows you how to cut out basically the entire top right off your air box. I don't want to do that because, well, my dad's has that done and I can see that it's going to be a little bit harder to cover over because of how much, uh, how they went about it. What I'm going to do instead is punch a few holes. Now, I understand not everyone has hole saws like this, but I happen to have them. So I'm going to cut roughly the same amount of uh, real estate out of my air box, but I'm just going to do it strategically with some holes so that I can uh, fill it later or I can, um, or so that I can close up some of that air box if I need to or, or adjust accordingly. If you just cut the top right out of your box, you're not left with much options. So. So here we go, I'm just going to take my time and cut out, oh, I removed the air filter in there. I took a piece of shop towel and put over the entire assembly and put an elastic band around the housing. So it's, the, it's all sealed off and we'll shop back it out later. My apologies if you guys are getting mad here with me for this because I'm doing to this doing this to a nice bike, but I'm sure Mr. Herbert Wingfield will have something to say about it. And now what I can do is these holes are small enough that I can use some rubber grommets in. So if I test out the bike now and I find it's just getting too much air for where I live or, or the setup here, I can just plug a couple of those holes. If I'm not getting enough fuel mileage and I want to switch back down to the 150 jet, I can plug one or two of these smaller holes until I get the combination right and the bike is running perfect for me. I kind of hold to the philosophy, like with all my projects, and I kind of preach from the beginning. No matter what you're doing, do the very best job you can do. So you could just leave all these edges hanging loosely and all ugly, but why not take a couple minutes and just tidy it up, make it look nice and clean, even use a little file if you got to, and clean it down. Why not? And it looks like you did good quality work. You're proud of the job you did. You didn't feel like you just hacked your bike to pieces because it's nice clean work there. So it's worth the extra minute in my opinion. On top of everything else, we have a, also have a brand new twin air going in there. 
it's oiled although not with filter oil right now because I don't have any on hand but now changing out the jet and drilling out those the air box there would be considered like macro adjustments then what you have is your fuel mix screw you remember we placed it with an extended one uh, a couple videos ago so we have uh, uh, we'll say a number 155 jet in there now so 155 units just for math's sake and then we have whatever X number of units of air coming in from the air box now w let's say it is 155 units that that jet allows that is a max capacity but we might not have quite enough air to match up with a full 155 units so what this mix screw will allow us to do is tone down so we're kind of uh, bottlenecking the amount of fuel that can come through that jet. So ProCycle recommends two turns out for their template. So I'm going to try, that's one turn, I'm going to try two turns out with the fuel mix screw and that will give us a rough adjustment. That should get the bike firing up and uh, we might have a lot of playing around but that should get us going and uh, we can work from there but like I said we might need less fuel than that if if you fire up if I fire up the bike now get a good and, and running and um, and go for a good ride and we start to tune if I can tune that fuel screw all the way in and bottom it out and it's still the bike is still running fine that means our jet is too big for the air box so we either need then to get more air into the bike or if we don't want to modify the air box anymore, we have to downsize to the 155 jet. Uh, if I can turn the fuel screw all the way out till it basically falls out of the carburetor and the bike's running doesn't improve anymore, that means we simply have too much air coming in from the air box. Now I didn't open the air box quite as much as the template, so that shouldn't be our problem. It should be more the other side, if anything. But we, uh, we have, I don't know, it's probably three and a half, four turns in and out of that set screw that we can play with, and that's your kind of, your mix range. That's what we have to work with. Now we'll see if the bike even fires up. Remember we have to pull up that flow bowl. Yeah, so I turned the choke all the way off and the bike wants to die. So we're going to have to come out more than our two turns. Holy smokes. That is a different bike. Man, that is something else. Oh, uh, so good. I went for know, probably a 10 or 12 kilometer ride into a gravel pit and then I pulled off, sat down and just did an idle drop procedure. Now what that is, is you let the bike run as long as as, as, long as you can get it running uh, at like a, a roughly good position and then you drop your idle down nice and low so the bike is just just plugging along there real low idle and then you want to take your mix screw and you want to slowly start turning it in and if your bike is idling at least half decent nicely uh, once it gets in so far, remember we're regulating the amount of fuel that gets mixed with that air. So if there's too little fuel mixed with that air, your bike will run all funny. So you start turning in, cut the fuel off a little bit less and a little bit less until you hear that RPM drop. And, and things will just drop and your bike will start just all over the place because it's trying to regulate and it can't. There's not enough fuel. If you get to that point, if you hear idling smoothly and you hear it drop off, 
just start bringing it back just a little bit until you just got it back and that's about where you should leave it. If your bike is starting idling rough, maybe try bringing it out. Then you have to play with which way you need to go. Are you already in too much or are you out too much? Because too much fuel and not enough air create an issue too. But Oh man, they're now in first gear. Uh, I'm pretty sure you could sit on the handlebars and it would still just throttle wheelie. <laughs> you can just roll throttle uh, off start and it'll just pick its end clean up which if you've driven a stock DR650, a bone stock DR650, it will not do that. Even in, fr in first gear, when I got this bike in first gear with everything stock, stock gearing and everything, you really had to wind on it and even give a little bit of a pull to uh, to get that front end to pick up. And now with how it's set up there now, man it just picks it up. Second gear, just the slightest tug on the bars, it'll just come clean up. Even third gear now, it'll start to pick up the front end a little bit. And uh, I'm not in a little slim gym. I've, uh, I'm a couple hundred pounds. So the fact that it'll do that with me, and I sit up nice and far too, right up here in the crook of the seat, man it's running so good. I'm not t touching a thing there now. I'm not going to I'm not going to mess with it at all. Right there now it's got minimal backfiring. There's no bog anywhere. Just smooth wide open throttle right from right from idle to to pin. It's just smooth, no bogging. It, it's <laughs> I couldn't imagine it being any better. It's just perfect. Um, oh, something exciting about that, man. So good. If you have a stock DR650, um, first off, ditch those trail wing tires. Those are the worst things. Your bike will transform night and day if you ditch those tires and get something like the DO606 here with lug. You'll enjoy your bike ten times more. Um, Regear it. Highly recommend. That 1444 for me is is spot on. A few people suggested going even uh, gearing it even lower, but then uh, I'm restricted too much on the highway. I still want to be able to click along 95 and 100 for a, a couple hours straight spurts if I need to, and it'll do that now no problem. While the first gear is still plenty low for me. Um, and then of course the air box and the and the jetting that pro cycle jet kit Whew, that is one tasty dish now i've got pretty much everything i want here in a, in a bike there are a couple more things probably going to be winter projects that i'm going to do with it i'm going to put a d606 on the front as well we're going to be looking at the dash there uh changing the bar setup from those crappy stock bars oh that is so good i think i'm going to go ride a little bit more Thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if there's anything else you want to see or if anything else that I'm not thinking about that I should do with this, uh, suspension mods is something else we're looking at. Someone noted in, 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 the, in the GoPro footage in one of the last videos that the bike is diving on the front end. That's a known, a known issue with these DRs. The, the stock springs are so soft and spongy and it does the front end just it is diving all the time so I might get some uh, some stiffer aftermarket front fork springs I might get a stiffer rear uh, rear dampener we'll see maybe I'll go get you guys some action shots hit that like button though or I'm not getting them see you later guys look Mr. Wingfield getting the gloves on here let's hear this uh Let's see if it's going to run.
bike just idling so smoothly. So nicely all the way along. Not to mention here now, it's getting enough fuel in the air that'll kind of motor itself along compared to before it would have just died there. 